while doing that, we flex, we create angulation as well. So if in your system you think about pointing your knee to create angulation, you're doing the same movement. We're just maybe thinking about it a little bit differently. And also by twisting our legs under us, we can create a little bit of separation in our hips as well, which then with flexion also creates more angles. So we like to do this because we think we're getting a few things for the one motion. Um, just in case your system, you don't really think about twisting your thighs, just a quick little drill and a little ski just to get the feeling. Um, an easy way to do it, just put the ski against your pole and try and twist it against the pole without your ski moving. You should feel your adductors doing some work, the muscles up the inside of your thighs. Um, we'll go skiing down here to save just the first snow gun. Um, have a go either alpine or parallel or telly. It's easy to find the feeling in um, parallel if you're not used to it. But um, let's go for a ski and just find that feeling if it's not familiar. And if it is, yeah, make sure it's familiar. Okay, let's go. Okay, so we've got to find this movement using a few, four different uh, four different terms. One of them is the height of your movement, so if you're up here for most of the time, or if you're taller, if you're low for most of the time, we also define the length of the movement. So sometimes we'll be shorter, not very much at all, other times longer. We also define the movement with a what we call the timing, which is where in the turn your feet are parallel. So sometimes, like in the basic turn, your feet are parallel when you're pointing down the hill. Um, and as a general rule for performance, as we have more performance, be it either on the front foot or the rear foot, we start to make change the movement so our feet are passing higher in the turn. And the final one is duration, is speed, I suppose. It's how fast your feet are moving. They might be moving very slowly, or for another circumstance, you might be moving very quickly. Um, and these sort of, and the first two, height and length, lead to sort of three practical outcomes. We can end up being tall and tight, low and tight, that's useful as well. And low and a bit long, not too long, but a bit long can also be useful, whereas at least for us, we don't see too much in being tall and long because it's quite hard to break the bellows then and have good control over the rear ski. So, just have a bit of a feel for what we talk about. We'll go down, yeah, let's go down to the lift, the uh, quad chair down there. Ski for a while being tall and narrow. See how that firstly affects how much you can use your leg to um, change direction. Also have a bit of a feel for can you create angles more easily or less easily? And um, what it's like with the pressure on your feet. Can you apply a lot of pressure, not much? Can you do a lot to change the amount of pressure on your feet? Then have a ski for a little oh, bit. Oh, no. Down low and tight, low with your feet together. Same story. And have a go with low and, this is what I call long. Not all the way, but that sort of There's a fair bit I want to cram in besides about what we think and if you think I'm wrong or full of it with what I think, jump up and let me know but otherwise we can move a little bit quicker. Um, the tall and tight, 
we noticed that you can twist your leg a lot more effectively. Also with that twisting of the leg, you've got a bit more range of motion in your joints, it's more easy to create angle in your knee and in your pelvis. And also, it takes a lot less energy, it's more efficient. But at the same time, loose and stability. Uh, being so close together with a free heel, not quite as secure in difficult terrain or situation. If we go low and tight, we've got a really good ability to pressure our skis, especially our rear ski if we need to. We can, um, but we lose that ability to twist with our leg, and we lose a lot of the ability to create angles, so we need to rely heavily on inclination. We need to use our muscles a lot. And then finally, if we're lower and longer, we're once again losing that leg rotary to a large degree. It's still getting more difficult to create angles in our body. And pressures can be a little bit more difficult, especially putting pressure on that rear ski. But there are conditions where having that extra that distance between your feet creates a bit more stability. Makes it a little bit easier to stay in balance. Does anyone else think much differently? Let's hop on the lift then, guys. The reason why this idea of being taller works better for twisting our legs the way our, related to what, the way our femur sits inside our pelvis and the hip. With the shape of that pocket dictates how much it can twist. So if I'm dead tall like this and I twist only my thigh, not my foot, not down there, but up there, if I'm dead straight. I can get to there. But as I flex my knee, it comes down further. And if I keep flexing, it's gonna come back. I can't twist it across when I'm at that wide point. So if I want to be able to twist my leg to point my ski, I've got to range from about here to here. Which is if I'm too tall, I can do it less. If I'm too low, I can do it less. We describe the movement, why, well not describe the movement, but the next factor that we think is important is how to change the movement, is how you're moving your feet back and forth. Um, you guys will know about this, so I don't think we need to see it, but just as a quick review, if I'm bringing my back foot forward, it tends to pull my mass forward, it tends to help me put weight on my front ski. If I'm pulling my front ski back, it tends to pull my mass back a bit, it tends to help me put weight on my rear ski. And if I don't want to do either of those, if I do those both and blend them, my mass tends to stay in the middle. Pretty simple. Um, we're not doing rocket surgery. To move our feet slowly, we want our feet to pass in the fore line. So that kind of sweet spot which we actually talked about for twisting our legs is kind of through the body of the turf. So we can take take advantage of that mechanic to make our life easier. We don't want to go too long because then we'll take more, more work. We don't want to be just super tight because then we're not stable enough. Um, and also typically we do it with both feet moving at the same time. And when we teach it to our students or the instructors, it's a lot of the terms and we call it Okay. Um, situation here. Um, it's not too steep, but we've got some pretty unfriendly snow. It's pretty wet, uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty punchy. Uh, in Australia, we, um, <laughs> in Australia, quite often we have natural conditions we need to ski across some of these to get from piece to piece, or if we're back to So we 
we want to change the timing of our movement from being in the middle of the turn to being up the top. That's going to allow us to put weight on that wrist knee sooner in the turn and make sure it's in control all the way through. The other thing we should do is pull our front ski backwards. Let's hop down here and we'll have a go. Sort of medium performance turns, a little bit more carby, a little bit less steer than we did up the top with the basics. So let's just get off this ledge first. Movement is starting to become a little bit clearer in that we wanted more edge, we wanted more ability to stand on our outside foot, but we still didn't want to go at top speed. So we moved, the, moved our feet passing higher up the turn to keep the rotary, to keep the speed control, but we did, well sorry, moved higher up the turn to get the pressure in the edge, but we didn't move it all the way up so we could keep that ability to twist our legs and control our speed by scrubbing some speed with our skis rather than only controlling it with turn shape. Okay, we've got a pretty long flat section here until the next useful bit where we can have a look at short turns. Um, I've got summer legs, I've been skiing for a couple of weeks now, so I'm going to be lazy in parallel, so don't hold that against me guys. But um, yeah, after about, I think, 100 metres, it starts to steepen off again, so let's head off. So now, we probably wouldn't bother with short turns here, the next bit of the pitch is better, but it's nice to have a bit of distance to get a rhythm and get a feel for something. Um, 
doing, thinking about short terms rather than any particular performance, the biggest thing we want is to have a good ability to twist our skis. So to do that, we want to stay a bit taller. We want to have our feet pass in the middle of the turn to allow us to have that good rotary. If we want to increase performance, we might make the movement by pushing our front ski forward to help get us on, to get more on that outside ski. If we were trying to do it to control our speed more, we might pull that leg back to um, not have so much pressure on the outside ski to make our turn scrub a little bit more. I'm going to do both at once. I find that sort of has a very subtle rotary effect as well, just kind of very lightly helps you get your skis around. Okay. Um, we've got a nice slope here to try and let them run. Do a more what most countries would call a calf turn, what we call a pure calf turn. Um, and for that, we want to get as much weight, or well, not as much, we want to get weight on the outside ski. We want to get our outside ski on edge as soon as possible. So we want to have our feet passing right up at the top of the turn, maybe even during the transition. And we want to be employed, we want to sort of be both tall and low at the same time so we can have what we call a cross under motion where we're being extended through the turn, sinking through the bottom of the turn to more easily allow us to cross our body over before putting that outside ski around forward and extending again. Okay, so basically I suppose what we tried to do there was the inverse of what we did for off pace. We, not quite the inverse, but we tried to move our foot quickly, we tried to change at the top of the turn quickly, but to weight the front ski rather than the back ski. And we had that cross under mo movement once again to try and get us onto that outside edge sooner whilst we pushed that leg forward to get a nice solid heel calf turn. Um, Cruise down onto the triple and then we'll um, finish off with the combat scan, which will be good move. Well, that's the mind of the Okay, guys, so. What I mean by combat skiing is skiing in snow or terrain that you don't want to. There's no real good reason to, except for you're getting to or from somewhere that you want to be. Be that a good run or just getting home. Um, snow in here is, yesterday when I skied at about this time, pretty rotten, pretty nasty, pretty tight. There's also lots of vegetation on the top that's really sticky. When I skied it this morning, it was pretty firm to breakable crust. So, either way, it's not the sort of stuff you really want to ski, but we'll go ski it anyway. Um, because we're right next to this T-bar here though, if you're finding it too much, or you're worried about safety, tweaking a knee or something, don't stress out, you won't be missing out on much. All you need to do is traverse left out here, and down the bottom, past the tea bar to the right, there's a second restaurant where the um, building that has been standing half finished for 10 years is. That's where everyone else will pop out of the trees. That cool with everyone? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so while we go in here, actually, no, I'll explain it out here. We've got a bit of a bigger group this time. So 
We basically got a similar thing to the last little bit of off paint, except um, we got bigger obstacles to deal with, and with that green stuff, the nastier snow. So the best way to turn is really to do, spend a little bit of time with your skis out of the snow, because it's just not that much fun or that useful. So we'll be doing the same thing, a movement with our feet passing up the top of the snow, pulling our front foot back to help us put pressure on that rear ski. But Start our next turn, try and extend back off that rear ski to make sure that it doesn't do anything strange in your transition and then with a little pop or not, sinking back down onto that new ski. Um, you want to compromise in your length because you've got some fairly tight turns in there. You want to, don't want to be too long because that makes it, makes it harder to turn quickly from turn to turn. But at the same time, if you're too tight, you won't have any stability. If something goes wrong, you'll be boop, on your face. <laughs> so let's go in and have a go, guys. Oh, my, sorry, the final thing is try to stick kind of leftish. Don't go rightish. It's quite easy to end up in the creek and have to walk out that if you go <laughs> too far to the right. <laughs> yep. Okay. Look at how wide is it underneath. Look at this. It's the best snow I've ever skied in all my life. Awesome lady. Yeah. Oh, the enormous snow what they have in Australia. Actually, no, I've never skied anything like this green stuff. Oh. The rest of it I know well. This green stuff is new. Um, snow in New Zealand is better. <laughs> The trees in Australia have three thick bark all year round and also oil. Oh. But I'm not used to this stuff. This is a whole new experience for me. Uh. And bears, yes. And bears, yeah, drop bears. They're the ones you need to be careful about. You know there's even a page on the, in Australia, on the website for Australia's yeah. best natural history museum. There's a page on drop bears. People got references. Okay guys, so we've got this steep in here. Um, a couple of times I've skied this, I've found trying to do a little Top <coughs> type turns, the best tactic, but once again, front foot back, pressure on the rear ski. <laughs> okay, guys. So we just basically went through how we as Australians talk about having the concept of a telemark movement rather than the concept of stances with lead changes, how we adjust that movement for different conditions. So rather than being dogmatic and we have to do it this way, we want to, we want to vary it to either best take advantage of biomechanics to make it as easy as we can or to be able to better deal with difficult snow or to be able to increase the performance of our turns or deal with more difficult terrain. Um, we do that through changing that shape of that stance by the timing of when our feet pass, by how we move our feet back and forth and which foot or both feet we decide we want to weight more or less. So yeah guys, that's in a nutshell. Thank you very much thank you. for coming. Thank you. Um,